Hello and welcome to this little mod spotlight on uh, the fusion reactor uh, from 0.0.1.4. I'll also go through some of the changes a bit of what's coming up in 0.0.1.5 since it has changed a little bit. There's a few bug fixes, a few different changes to the way it works. Um, but this is the sort of part of the mod spotlight which I was meant to do yesterday and the day before, whatever. Um, but I haven't been able to do it until today. Um, so we're just going to have a look at the fusion reactor basically um, in detail. So before. I told you roughly how it works. Uh, you can go and watch that actual full mod spotlight for the full uh, everything that's in 0.0.1.4. And I gave you the general gist, which is that you first of all want to um, input power into the reactor until it's hovering around uh, 8 mega Kelvin. And once you've got 8 mega Kelvin, you can put in your nuclear fuels, your fusion fuels, um, which are hydrogen, deuterium, tritium, helium-3, lithium-6, lithium-7, and boron-11. You can put them into the uh, fusion reactor and you can start generating heat and your efficiency will increase and increase and as your efficiency increases the RF per tick uh, that you produce increases. So that's pretty much the general gist of the way it works um, but I want to give you an actual idea of um, the, the actual way it works for those who actually want to do some very uh, precise calculations about you know how to keep their you know how to make their redstone clocks to keep the reactor uh, running at around 100% efficiency. Um, so I'll give you uh, just some of the numbers uh, and I'll put them on the screen and put links in the description uh, for the different things that you probably want to do. Uh, so first of all, um, what you want to what you want to want to talk about is uh, something known as heat variables. And heat variables uh, are assigned to every single combination of fuels in the reactor. So for example, hydrogen, hydrogen. Uh, sorry, uh, well. As an example that I know off the top of my head, deuterium and tritium has a heat variable of about 7.7. Uh, hydrogen, at, oh, that's oxygen. Hydrogen and boron 11 have a heat variable of about 9.9, 9.84 maybe. And basically, these heat variables determine the way that the efficiency changes with the temperature. So, for example, uh, deuterium and tritium, uh, the, their value of 7.7 .7 is actually very, very low. It's the lowest one in the game by quite a while. So you'll see, um, once the temperature starts to increase, that uh, unlike other fuels, uh, the RF per tick actually starts to increase even at very, very low temperatures. Um, and the maximum efficiency is actually only at 700 megakelvin. Uh, the maximum temperature in this reactor is 20,000 megakelvin. And some of the, um, so if this is the heat bar here, uh, the deuterium-tritium reaction has a maximum efficiency of about down here. And the efficiency slowly actually decreases as you keep going. Um, while some of the reactions will have maximum efficiencies of anywhere in this heat bar, really. Um, so uh, heat variables of, say, 10.5, 10.7, um, like it is in 0.0.1.5, um, mean that you'll have to actually get your reactor to be very, very hot before you get the high efficiencies that you want. Um, at the moment, the highest uh, heat variable is about 10.18, and that's a maximum heat of about here, a best efficiency of about uh, the middle, about 9,000. Uh, mega Kelvin, but just to spread it out more across this temperature band, I've increased some of them um, so that it goes from about 7.7 .7 to about uh, 10 point 10 point nine now. So you can get heat variables anywhere between those values. Um, and I'll put a list of them in the description um, for those who want to see them. I'll just link to a um, Minecraft forum uh, uh, comment that I made where all of them are listed. And you can just read through them and uh, put them into the equation, which I'm about to talk about now. So the equation is uh, the efficiency equation, which is just an equation that's used to turn the temperature into an efficiency. Uh, so the efficiency is based off both the temperature, uh, that's the main thing, and also the heat variable. Um, so the temperature obviously is the same for any fuel combination, but the heat variable is different for each fuel combination. So the efficiency based on the temperature will be different for each fuel combination. And it has a curve, uh, pretty similar if you follow the mouse, it has a curve pretty similar to something like this, where it goes up very rapidly and then falls slowly. Um, for that's for, for example, the deuterium-tritium, because the heat variable is very small, the efficiency rises very quickly and then slowly falls off for a very long time. Um, but something with a very, very high um, heat variable uh, will have something that's a bit smoother, will reach a peak and then fall off again. So. You want to have a look again at that uh, Minecraft forum comment um, and also put the equation in the description and you can just uh, change the heat variable with anyone you want just to see what the maximum uh, best efficiency uh, temperature uh, combination is. 
and you can just put it into the equation, look on Wolfram Alpha, which is going to be the link, and then you can just uh, set up your redstone circuit to keep it around that temperature once you get there. Another thing to mention is that every single fuel combination actually has a maximum RF per tick uh, per reactor chunk, so each one of them has a power variable as well. Um, the deuterium tritium reaction has the highest uh, power variable, so it will, uh, out of all the reactions, produce the most RF per tick, uh, but there's also a um, fuel variable as well. So the deuterium tritium reaction, although it produces the most amount of power, it also uses up fuel the most quickly, uh, the fastest. Um, while the uh, boron hydrogen reaction will produce less RF per tick, but use up fuel much more slowly. Um, so the um, power per fuel uh, ratio is, I think, actually a bit higher for hydrogen and boron, but it will just produce it more slowly. And there's actually different combinations which may not necessarily have very good RF per tick, um, but it will uh, have a good uh, ratio. Okay, just to go over the more technical things, which I may not have explained very well. Uh, first of all, redstone signals can only be applied through the bottom of the reactor. Um, so in this example, I've got a lever here, and underneath the lever, I've actually got um, some redstone. Just to show you, I've got a redstone signal here, which turns on and off. So you can see, just to show you that it works, you can see now the reactor's turned off. Um, now it's on again. Uh, so basically, you've got a redstone signal down here, and you can uh, easily use slabs to stop, uh, well, you, you wouldn't have this problem normally, but it's just because I've got sand, but you can, if you do have this problem, then you can just use slabs. And the, uh, the redstone just travels underneath there, and eventually it gets to here, where I simply have a series of redstone torches, um, which uh, invert each other when the uh, reactor is turned on. So the redstone will go into that redstone torch, turning it off, which will then in turn turn the redstone torch on. Uh, so you can just make a tower of redstone torches like that um, to uh, put a si signal into the bottom of the fusion reactor. You can also use um, things like red alloy wire from Project Red or Project Blue or whatever it's called, Blue Power. Um, so you can just use that. Uh, that's that's one option. But if you just have vanilla redstone, then that's the best way to do it. There, and I don't think there actually are other ways to do it. So that is the easiest way to do it. Um, I may try to add uh, redstone signals going into the side, but I, I'm struggling with that a little bit. But for now, you can just use redstone signals to the bottom like I just showed you there. Um, power can be uh, inputted into any side, and um, items can be uh, taken out and uh, put in any side. Right now, the outputs aren't working, but they will in the next version, 0.0.1.5. Uh, Some other things that have changed. Um, normally, um, let's just put a bit more deuterium tritium in just to show you what I mean. So normally what happens is that um, if I was to say shift click, this is just a little technical little thing that is annoying for, for some players probably. If I, if I shift click deuterium into the reactor, it will go into fuel slot 1. But then if I was to shift click another type of fuel in, it will go into 2. Uh, it will go into number 1 as well. But what I've changed in 0.1.5 is to check what fuel is already in uh, the first tank. And if it's different, so say if I have deuterium in, it will say, oh, there's no tritium in that fuel level, but that fuel level is empty. So we'll actually shift click into this slot instead. So that's changed just to make it easier to just shift click things around in the fusion reactor. Um, and also what happens if both are full and you try to shift click another fuel in, it just won't work. It will just, um, that don't worry about that, that's just a bit broken at the moment. Um, it will try to shift click it in, but it won't find any space. So it will just put it into the top of your inventory, just like it would with any other object. Uh, for this version, for some reason, the uh, outputs, uh, your spaces are a bit glitchy, but don't worry about that because they're not actually used for anything. Um, but they will be in the next version. Uh, in the next version, it will be used. It will output things like uh, helium four, helium three, uh, deuterium, tritium, uh, all the usual stuff. Uh, but it will also um, output uh, neutrons as well. Um, so this is probably the best used uh, used for uh, outputting um, uh, helium four. It's a good output of helium four, but you can just use a helium collector for that. The main thing this is used for is to collect neutrons and you need to use um, these uh, capsules. Uh, the RTG fuel cell uh, recipe will be changed. Uh, you'll need to use an empty capsule with a piece of plutonium-238, and there will actually be a separate empty capsule which will be used to store sort of the radioactive things like neutrons and all those, all those sorts of things. And you use empty capsules and it will collect neutrons that build up in the reactor. But remember, only certain types of uh, fusion reactions will actually produce neutrons in the same way that only some types of uh, fusion reactions will produce hi uh, helium or hydrogen or whatever. So you want to make sure that you find uh, or work out a reaction that will probably create neutrons. Um, 
and you can do that just by sort of trial and error, or you can make sort of uh, sensible guesses if you know um, a little bit about uh, the constitutions of the uh, the uh, nuclei of the things you're putting in. So, for example, deuterium is made of a neutron and a proton. Tritium is made of uh, a proton and two neutrons. Um, so you've basically got five uh, nucleons. Um, so it would be sensible to estimate that you would create one helium and one neutron. So that is actually what it does produce, I think. Um, that would be my, my guess. I'm pretty sure it does. That's, I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's what it does produce. Uh, so yeah, you would produce one uh, helium-4 and one neutron. So this would be a, a good reaction to produce neutrons in, I think. Um, I may be wrong there. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. Some reactions will produce neutrons, some others won't. And some reactions will produce a lot more neutrons per fuel. Um, so the really, really heavy um, things like boron and lithium or not really heavy, but heavier things, will produce more outputs because they're made of more nucleons. So um, it will produce lighter, a lot of lighter um, outputs. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, general, that's general gist of what's going on. Um, just to follow up on that shift clicking thing where um, fuel will only go into the slots it can, um, that will be also true for automation as well. So if you were to pipe in, say, if you were piping in a lot of, um, say if you had deuterium and tritium being piped in, all the deuterium would go into one of the slots and all of the tritium would go into another slot. Instead of all the tritium getting stuck in one of the slots, all the deuterium getting stuck in the other, um, it will be um, done by the GUI. It will uh, by the container, it will properly insert deuterium into the right slot and tritium into the right slot, and that's true for any fuel combination as well. Um, if you have just got deuterium and, and deuterium, like just two of the same fuel, then it will just input into the first slot available. Um, it won't evenly spread it out. Um, but otherwise, if you want to have two different types of fuel, then it will sensibly uh, distribute them in the container, which is good. Uh, that's quite useful for automation because I can imagine, I haven't automated one yet, but I can imagine that it's probably a bit frustrating for people uh, when the um, reactants get stuck in the input slots. Um, another thing that uh, will be added, of course, is the oxidizer, uh, which right now in this version doesn't do anything. It doesn't have a recipe. It has a broken side as well, and it only has one recipe, which is, doesn't make any sense, uh, which is uh, this one, I believe, uh, the weird recipe here. That's just a test recipe. Don't worry about that. Um, it will actually have a proper use. Um, there's going to be a whole new range of uh, fission fuels. There will be um, uh, new uh, uranium fuels, um, the MOX fuel recipe will change, and uh, there'll be some new plutonium fuels as well, and they're basically just going to be more efficient, um, but more heat generating versions of the uh, regular fuels. So there's going to be a, uh, eight new oxide fuels. Um, so yeah, that'd be pretty cool to have. So you can look forward to that. You can make your uh, fission reactors even more um, powerful, but you're also going to have to maybe edit them a bit just to uh, cope with the new heat generation. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. As I said, all the equations, all the uh, things are in the in the com in the not in the comment in the description below, and you can just have a look at them just to really work out what uh, what uh, what's happening in the fusion reactor. Um, and also, you can look back at the general mod spotlight, um, which is the one before this video. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any more questions about the fusion reactor or any part of the mod, really, do post in the comments or on the Minecraft forum page or on the Curse Forge page, and I'll be happy to. Um, answer. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.